Uh, when you look at Ball State, it seems like they've got a lot of experience, a lot of fifth-year players that are quarterback. It's got 50 touchdown passes in its career, 6,500 yards. What do you see about the experience in this Ball State team being able to play Saturday? And they're the, the league champion from a year ago. So they not only have a, an experienced team, but a team that's experienced a lot of success. So Coach Dew's done a great job. This is alma mater, and I know the, the pride he has of being the coach there, I'm certain, and, uh, and, and coaching that team and building that, that program. So they've got a good football team. They've got a lot of talented players. Uh, their skill is really good. Uh, they're very big. Uh, their defensive line, we, there one guy was listed uh, earlier in the week in the two deep, we got, it was a uh, six foot and a half inch. And we watched on film. We're like, there's no way that guy's six foot and a half inch. Well, it turns out they, they redid the, uh, the heights and weights on the, uh, on that guy it came back today, he's six, five. So, uh, the, the point five, uh, they took the point out and they looked a little bit more like he did on film. So they, the big rangy guys and, and, uh, just, I know they got a good football team and it's a challenge to go on the road and play at somebody else's stadium. Coach, just to ask you about the quarterback situation. Christian Anderson obviously was, took a shot in the last game. He said he was day to day on Monday. Uh, what do you think? What is this situation? And is it basically you've got alternate alternative players that you could put into the game that we might see? All along, we felt like we've had uh, several guys that could play. So obviously, uh, Tyre came in last week and did a nice job. He started the season for us. So uh, having him back healthy is certainly a luxury for us. And and then having Jamel Jones, uh, another starting quarterback, though it was just for a game. And then Jabari Laws, who uh, we, we anticipated was was uh, for a long time uh, going to be the starter even uh, even a year ago before he got hurt. So um, you know, we, 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 we're really fortunate to have some guys there. And, and uh, if Christian can't go, we're we're going to be fine. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Hey, Jeff, Ken McMillan. Um, Jeff, what, uh, we were just talking about uh, Eric Smith uh, getting a semifinalist for the Campbell Award. Can you uh, uh, tell us what are your thoughts about Eric and what he means to this team? Eric's a, been a tremendous player for us, and I think he, he perhaps may be the best inside linebacker we've had since I've been here. And we've had some really good ones. He's a terminating tackler. He's a really smart football player. He's made uh, uh, just an incredible number of plays for us, tackles. He's a, uh, he's a thick hitter. When he hits people, they go backwards. He, he does not get knocked back on a tackle very often. Uh, he takes on blocks the same way, just a, a really thick, heavy hitter. And uh, I just naturally like that. Very strong kid. Um, it, it very cerebral. He's a deep thinker. He, he uh, very mindful of what everybody else is doing on the field on defense and, and where his, his place is in, in the scheme. I think he does a really good job with that. Uh, coaches our young guys and really helps our young guys develop. Um, He's been a special teams player for us. He's just done a lot of things. And he's a team captain, so our guys have a tremendous amount of respect for him. He's not a, an incredibly vocal guy, but he's vocal in his own way. He doesn't yell and raise his voice. He just he talks to guys and encourages them. And, and I think our guys just, just feel like he's uh, just that, that steady rock for our, for our team. So, uh, you know, Eric's a special kid. He's a really good student as well, does, does really well in his classes. Uh, does well in the military side. So just a complete, a, com a complete cadet athlete for us here at West Point. I know you have a lot of respect for all of your defenders, but in a way, is Eric kind of the glue of this defense? And does the team go as he goes? Oh, I don't know if, if there's one particular guy over there. I, we've got four team captains that start on defense. So Nolan Cockrell, said Cunningham, Marquel Broughton, along with Eric, I think I'll do a tremendous job on defense. And we're very fortunate to have that many guys over there that, that our team really believes in. So he's, he's one of those guys, certainly, uh, that I would put at the, at the very top. He's, um, he's just, he's a solid player and, uh, and a very confident player and he instills confidence in other people. 
we see Johnny Radigan sign, signing with the Seahawks. Does Eric have a pro potential here? Oh, like I said, I think he might be the best inside linebacker we've we've coached here. So uh, the last two guys he stood beside in, in, in our defense are both playing in the NFL. So I think he's certainly got the potential and I think he's got the skill, the skill set that the uh, he's good enough football player to play in the league. That'll be a matter of other people decide now. I don't have a draft pick. <laughs> the um, if you can talk about the defensive secondary here, uh, obviously they're having a lot of success with the interceptions and all. Is that a product of these kids individually getting better, or is this also partly a product of the scheme this year? Because they seem to be having a lot of success back there. Oh, it's both. I think our coaches put our players in really good position to make plays, and and. Uh, you know, the guys are, are doing a really good job. I mean, there's, there's been some, some great interceptions. The, the, uh, the one you, you see Mark well attacking that, that uh, receiver two games ago and kind of flying in front of the ball and the pick that Jabari Moore had down at Georgia state attacking that hitch route. Those are both great interceptions. So um, just, I think those guys are, are playing very aggressive, but our coaches are doing a good job of, of helping them, helping them develop and, and be in position. And then Jabari Moore, can you just uh, elaborate on uh, what he means to the team right now and his development? Because I think if there's an aggressive defensive secondary guy, this is the guy because he has disrupted so many plays. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's just continued to improve. Coach Dixon, who coaches our corners, does a tremendous job coaching those guys. Uh, he coaches them hard. He pushes them to be their best. They have a just a great, a great respect for him. Daryl was a, was a tremendous college player himself uh, and is an outstanding coach. And, and uh, so I think, I think he does a good job of, of helping those guys develop. And, and Jabari's just improved uh, over the course of the time he's been here. He, he just continues to get better and better, which is great for us. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, Coach. I think you've talked about uh, Zach Harding's performance against Miami um, earlier, but can you talk about the work ethic he has and to be to punt that well after not punting the previous two games? Well, I mean, he punts a lot. He punts a lot in practice and uh, punts in pregame. He's he's uh, he's ready to go every game. Just so happens we had to send him out there last game uh, a lot more often than we would have liked. But uh, but he did a great job and he's prepared and ready. You know, those guys are so different from other players. Those, those guys on offense and defense, they play the game and they might have one bad play and then have a, another couple of good two or three or four or five plays and then have another bad play. Uh, those punters and kickers and snappers, they can't have any bad plays. It, it, it gets noticed. They trot out there for one snap and that's their, uh, that's their resume until you see them again. And uh, as in terms of our punter, I hope we don't see him at all the rest of the year, but uh, we, we likely will. I think he's, he's uh, a great talent and he works really, really hard at his craft. He's very professional, uh, very serious about, about being a good player at his position. Coach Saturnio is, is working wonders with those guys, not only the specialists, but our, our special teams units in general. And, uh, and Zach's a really good player. And that's a guy, too, that, like Eric, that I think has potential to play at the next level. Just wondering where Julian McDuffie's at. Is he a uh, possibility that he plays on Saturday? He was ready to go Saturday. Uh, we just, because he had been hurt, uh, we didn't feel like Saturday we needed to put him in the game to, to uh, at any point, uh, we're, we're we felt like the game was in jeopardy and we, we just needed a senior guy that, that, that we think is a really good player, which we, which we do, but he is healthy and ready to go for this week. And I anticipate playing him this week. Jeff, can you talk about the, the punt blocks last week? Uh, was it a product of the, the scheme? What, uh, how Miami was defending or, have you guys kind of made a lot of progress here? Um, I think one, we put those guys in position to make the play. Uh, Coach Saturnio works painstakingly to 
to come up with the schemes that we think are, uh, are, are going to give us a chance to get a guy free. And, uh, and so, you know, just each week we try to come up with something where we're, we're going to be able to, to spring a guy and it doesn't always work. Uh, that's credit to the other teams. They, they protect the, the punt. They work hard at, at the protection, but we, we work, um, on the fundamentals of, of kick blocking, of rushing the kick and, and blocking kicks, maybe as much as anybody in the country, I mean, we're fanatical about the fundamentals in our kicking game. So uh, those guys get a lot of work at aligning and coming off the ball and getting to the block point and then actually taking the ball off of the punter's foot. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, fundamental time we spend. We spend far more time on the fun fundamentals of kick blocking than we do the scheme. Uh, but we do take time to, to get those guys lined up in the scheme that we think is going to be best for that particular week. Do you, do you, what do you think over the years, and since you've been coaching a long time, is it, is it individual talent that makes a punt block happen? Or is it the scheme, as we were just discussing, you know, just mixing up the formations a little bit? What do you, what do you think? Quick, explosive guys with a lot of want to. That, that's how you block a punt. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Any others for Coach? Coach, I was just going to ask you a little bit more about the matchup that uh, uh, Drew Pitt creates, a quarterback from Ball State. Uh, uh, when you've got a, a guy with that much experience at, at playing quarterback for the opposition, I mean, you may, does he compare to Bailey Zapp of Western Kentucky in, in experience? Uh, but where does that put the pressure on the defense? Is it the defensive line to get a pass rush or – uh, the state or the defensive backs to uh, provide coverage? Oh, again, I think we've got to mix up uh, the, the things that we give him. A guy with experience like that, he's seen it all. He's seen pressure. He's seen uh, eight guys dropping with, uh, with, with a three-man rush, um, zone blitzes, and he's seen it all. Uh, and, and, and he can handle all of it. So we've got to do a good job mixing it up. And then we've got to win some one-on-one -on -one battles. We've got to win some one-on-one -on -one battles up front and, uh, and try to get to him. One, make him throw the ball uh, at least on time, but, but hopefully earlier than he wants to, uh, and, and do a good job on the back end of covering those guys long enough that the rush can make him throw the ball and, uh, and we can force an incomplete or, or try to get a takeaway. Um, against a guy that's got that much experience and he's got a supporting cast. He's got a really, really strong bunch of players around him, the, the backs and receivers. Um, they got to get, they got a good talented football team. So that that's going to be a challenge. And, uh, and you saw that with Zap a couple of games ago, that kid's outstanding. And so if you give him time, he's, he's going to be able to find an open receiver and it's hard to cover those guys forever. So pressure's got to come either by a pass rush or, or uh, a blitz or something, something that, that uh, is uh, freeing up an extra guy to get involved in the rush uh, or uh, just doing a great job of, of covering those guys. Uh, and, and he just decides, look, I'm out of time. Here comes the rush. And uh, I should have thrown it a second ago and I got to let the thing go. So I think Coach Woody does a really good job of of getting us in a in a a plan that uh, positions our guys for success. The bottom line is the players have to execute. It's just like the kick blocks. We can give them a scheme and we can practice the fundamentals. When it comes down to it, they got to go make a play. So that's uh, that's what's got to happen on Saturday. We have eleven guys working together and and uh, and the right guys make a play.